Americans uh, just from the wars, from combat. Um, uh, you know, that's 7,000 plus families destroyed, devastated by, by Bush's you know, decision to lie us into this war on Cheney's. And, uh, you know, a million dead Iraqis and Afghans at least. But I heard nothing about that. So I, I, I think it's important to point this out. Um, you know, we've got a history here in the United States of being lied into wars. And, you know, it's, now let me make very clear here. There are exceptions to this. World War II was at a, I think, a war that we really had to enter. And, you know, thank God we did. We helped defeat the Nazis. Otherwise, you know, we'd be speaking German now or the whole world would be, uh, you know, filled with uh, right-wingers. Um, the war in Ukraine. Here you had, you know, Putin attacking a, a sovereign country next door to him twice, you know, in, in 2014 in Crimea and then last year in, in Ukraine. Um, the possibility that China could attack Taiwan, these are allies of ours. But that said, you know, defensive military operations like Ukraine or World War II have really been the minority in, in uh, uh, well, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll say that, the minority in, in American history. Um, you know, after 9-11, for example, the Taliban said, you know, this is terrible. Your, your buildings got knocked down. We had nothing to do with that. We will arrest bin Laden and give him to you if you want. And then you see the headline in the Washington Post, this was back in 2000, uh, 2001, quote, Bush rejects Taliban offer on Bill bin Laden. That's the headline, the Washington Post headline. And with that decision not to arrest bin Laden for his crimes, but instead to go to war, first in Afghanistan, then in Iraq, you know, Bush and Cheney put us on a path to disaster, essentially. You know, the 9-11 the attacks were not they had nothing to do with Afghanistan, other than that bin Laden had been living there. But at the time of the attacks, bin Laden was actually in Pakistan. They were not planned in Afghanistan. They were not hatched, developed, practiced, expanded, worked out. Yeah, he had a terrorist training camp there. None of the 9-11 hijackers had gone through it. That was just basically a little kind of money-making thing on the side that, you know, bin Laden was doing. Um, you can't track a lot back to that. Maybe the U.S. has coal, I'm not sure, but, um, but you know, almost two decades later, then Donald Trump and, and his, uh, uh, and his uh, CIA director, Mike Pompeo, get, they gave the Taliban everything they wanted. Power, legitimacy. We shut down nine out of 10 Air Force bases when, when it became clear that Joe Biden had won the election. Now, this was all to set up a disaster for Joe Biden. You remember when Donald Trump ordered the release of 5,000 of Afghanistan's worst war criminals? Murderers, rapists? Why, why did he do that? Well, because the Taliban wanted them released, and he wanted the Taliban to stop shooting at Americans because it looked bad for him. Seriously. Trump said, oh, the relationship I have with the mullah is really very good. Right. Following that betrayal, Donald Trump and the Republican Party scrubbed the record of their embrace of the Taliban from their websites. Uh, you know, this, this but, but this isn't the first time this has happened. And that's why it's so important that we learn from 9-11, because we didn't learn from these previous examples. Vietnam wasn't the first time an American president had lied, and his buddies in the media had lied us into a war. Uh, this was, with Vietnam, it was Defense Secretary Robert McNamara lying to the president. For two weeks, Lyndon Johnson thought that our, our warship in the Gulf of Tonkin had been, had been hit by the Vietnamese. All that time, Robert McNamara knew that wasn't the case. But, you know, by the time Johnson found out, he was hip deep in the war. The same thing with uh, President McKinley lying us into the Spanish-American War, saying, you know, remember the USS Maine, that ship that caught on fire in the, in the harbor, in, in the Havana Harbor in Cuba? Well, the USS Maine did catch on fire because its boiler blew up. It had nothing to do with Spain attacking us. But, hey, it was a, it was a great war, at least from McKinley's point of view. I mean, with that war, we seized a whole bunch of territory, including the Philippines. 
Arguably the first time we relied into a ma major war was 1846. This was when President James Polk lied that we had been invaded by Mexico and used that as a pretense to declare the Mexican-American War, which then seized parts of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and Southern California for the United States. Or you could even argue that uh, Andrew Jackson, when he signed the Indian Removal Act in 1830, lied us into a war, that the Indians were a threat to, to America and all that kind of stuff. But looking at the war in, in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq is particularly important, I think, because of the way George Bush handled this. Back in uh, 2000, or back in 1999, George W. Bush's family hired Miss Mickey Herskowitz. He was a family friend and an author. He, he ghostwrote autobiographies for people and for political figures. And he ghostwrote the first draft of George W. Bush's book, A Charge to Keep, his autobiography. He always had to publish an autobiography before you run for president, right? So it was kind of obligatory, so he did it. And Herskowitz tells us, quote, one of the things Bush said to me, one of the keys to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as a commander in chief. My father had all this political capital build up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait and he wasted it. If I have a chance to invade Iraq, now keep in mind, this was a year before the election of 2000. Bush said, if I have a chance to invade Iraq, if I get that much capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I want to get passed. And I'm going to have a successful presidency. Then you had Jeb Bush, George's brother, with the Project for a New American Century, you know, petitioning then President uh, Barack or then President uh, uh, Bill Clinton to invade Iraq in 1998. I mean, you know, the the oil barons had had their eyes on the fact that Iraq is home to 10 percent of the world's oil. Dick Cheney, when he was vice president, was busted by a right-wing group, Judicial Watch, Larry Clayman's group, was busted for, you know, laying out plans to di divide up the uh, oil fields in, in Iraq and deciding which companies he was going to sell them off to. I mean, this is how nuts it is. But his attack on Afghanistan and his attack on Iraq, it, neither was, was provoked. Afghanistan, like I said, had nothing to do with 9-11. Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. Iraq had nothing to do with Al-Qaeda, for that matter. Saddam Hussein hated Osama bin Laden, hated Al-Qaeda. I mean, he could have been an ally for us if we wanted to go after Al-Qaeda, because he routinely executed Al-Qaeda Al members in Iraq. But, you know, George Bush wanted his war, and Dick Cheney wanted a war, too, because he, you know, he had been the CEO of Halliburton. He was sitting on hundreds of thousands of Halliburton shares, if my recollection is correct. And those shares had collapsed in value because the company almost went bankrupt when Cheney left it to become vice president. Because Halliburton had bought Dresser Industries on the assumption that the federal government would backstop their asbestos claims, and they didn't. And Dresser went bankrupt, and, and Halliburton nearly went bankrupt. So what happens? You know, Bush and Cheney declare two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and then who's their principal contractor with no bid contracts, no oversight, no ceiling, Halliburton. I mean, it, you know, crony capitalism doesn't get much worse than this. And then, you know, more recently in 2020, you've got uh, when, when uh, it was apparent to Donald Trump that he was not going to win the election, he set up a situation to sabotage Joe Biden in Afghanistan. He closed nine out of our 10 Air Force bases there in the, in just a month before Biden comes into office to make it really difficult for Biden to pull us and our troops and our friends out of that country. Now, it was a sabotage attempt, a preemptive sabotage attempt, because he had also signed an executive order saying that by May of 2021, we had to be out of Afghanistan. Now, you know, Biden pushed that back a few months, but still, this was the, the entire withdrawal that Biden gets criticized for was not only set up by Bush, but was also sabotaged by Bush, releasing 5,000 al-Qaeda killers into the, into the populace, shutting down nine out of 10 Air Force bases. I mean, it was just, it was an abomination. It never should have happened that way. As, as Biden said, when I came into office, I inherited a deal cut by my predecessor when he invited 
the Taliban to Camp David on the eve of 9-11 in 2019. The left Taliban in the strongest position militarily since 2001.